So back in uh, 2011, I was at the uh, Anchorage meeting and I saw this slide by Gary Hitzig that showed uh, a half of a, of a scar with PRP and A cell and the other side without it. And I, that just stuck in my brain. I went home and started to do this and um, offered a lot, uh, my patients at cost, which I still do for the procedure. And I started with using this uh, very simple autologel system, which actually has worked well. And, um, uh, I, I've, been, I've been very happy with uh, this system. The reason I switched over more recently in the last two years to the ANGEL system is that it gives me both quantity and quality and ability to titrate the, um, the product without additional expense. Uh, and I'll tell you how I, my recipe in a moment. Uh, the key with PRP is that you really want your platelet concentration to be around 2x above physiologic levels because there's a drop-off point of efficacy when you are outside of that range. So the way that the uh, ANGEL system allows you to do that is this very confusing chart is not meant to be memorized, but I, I pull 60 cc's of blood out. I actually pull 120 cc's, but they're in 60 cc vials. And you see the 2x of that 60 cc line is about 18 cc's. So I get about 35 cc's of usable product, which is really helpful. So the way that I mix it, um, I use a 7% hematocrit. And the reason I do that is a lot of people say, well, you don't want blood in your, you know, in the mix. And this is not an orthopedic surgery because there's blood everywhere when you're making a recipient site. So I don't think it compromises it. But I have a very low white count. The argument I talked to the scientific head for Lisa's company is that when you're using a 7% hematocrit, you're pulling the more active portions of the platelets out. Uh, and, that's, and, and that's what he says. I, I, perhaps that's correct. So I pull 120 cc's of blood out, and that spins me down about 35 cc's of usable product. Um, I've noticed in the back, the problem is sometimes with the A cell in the donor area, it could actually widen some areas of scar. So I've, I've actually stopped using A cell in the donor area. So what I'll do is I'll uh, pour out the 35 cc's into a ramekin. Uh, draw out five cc's of, of PRP without any A cell. I'll take 100 milligrams of fine particle L A cell and put it in, it, put it into the um, into the mix and draw them into five cc syringes. And then I'll use 10 cc's of that mix for grafts and 20 cc's into the recipient area. Um, if they have a, a bald area like the crown, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and not transplant that, but I'm just going to do a more limited case in the front. I'll probably take five cc's out of that 20 cc mix here um, and use that in the back and I'll mix it with uh, activated by either uh, a microneedle and or using some calcium gluconate which is really easy off the shelf. It's not as consistent, uh, I have not seen as consistent a growth without surgery but with surgery I've seen it a tremendous stabilizer and, and growth for my patients. Um, People ask me, do I do it after the recipient sites, before the recipient sites, what plane do I do it? I just put it in subcutaneously. I've done it both before I make recipient sites, I've done it after recipient sites. I've seen equal results. I now do it after recipient sites so I can get all the recipient tumescents out and then I put it in at the end. But I, I honestly don't think it matters so long as you get it in there and it's subcutaneous plane. Uh, I, I just like to do it at the very end. But the key here, if I didn't uh, articulate this, which I know I haven't, is you must draw the blood prior to anything is done to the patient before an inter IV is started, before you do anything, because you want all the growth factors to go into the blood being collected rather than into the wound or anywhere else. So you don't want to have harvested the donor area and then draw the blood. It must be the first thing you do. The uh, mix, my recipe for without surgery it is essentially very similar. I just use half that. Um, so I use a, a single 60 cc blood draw. Now the, the negative of using the angel system if you're gonna use it for facial work or for areas that you just want a little bit uh, is that you minimum to get this machine to work is you need 40 cc's to draw. So that, so I, otherwise the machine just won't work. And the, I, so I do 18 cc's, which is half that, you know, of, of 35 at 7% hematocrit. Mix the whole thing with 100 milligrams of A cell. And then I just basically take about one, one to five, uh, um, in other words, take a f about, uh, I draw maybe four cc's and then, uh, of, ca of the PRP and A cell and put a, a one cc of calcium gluconate in there. And I may derma roll it as well, just to really activate the areas. And my protocol right now is I typically do it about every three months for three rounds to try to, to, to get it to grow. And I don't see it always growing, but I have seen good results with this. 
Um, and so, just to keep in mind, you have to activate PRP through some mechanism for it to work, whether that's mechanical, such as recipient site creation, or a needle roller, or a uh, thrombin calcium gluconate, calcium chloride, um, one of those products to get it going. Um, this is just an example from a colleague of mine, Jerry Cooley, to show some of the, the, the healing of, of the area with uh, uh, PRP and A-cell um, after injury. Um, and this is just one of uh, a case I did with just adding PRP and A-cell. I did the, the transplant on the front, and then I, I injected his back and noticed a, a good change. These are some of the self-controls that um, patients that came to me at the time that I was just introducing PRP and A-cell and was offering them this option. Uh, some took it, some didn't. Those that didn't take it, and the few that I had that had poor growth came back and I did a second session, and they had explosive growth. And so this is where, where I was starting to get convinced that, hey, you know, for those patients that have potential variability and poor growth, because that's the nature of where they are, I believe that PRP is an equalizer. It really helps bring people up to speed. And those that few that I did PRP didn't do A-cell in, I, I noticed when I came back a second session at the A-cell, they either chose it for religious, financial reasons, or whatever, and I talked to them about the A-cell doesn't have any live cells in it. I've seen finer gra graft growth, and I've got very experienced staff that does not traumatize grafts during insertion, but I think there's a micro trauma, trauma um, portion when you put it in, and the A-cell really helps to, to not only help transected hairs, but also help the, the grafts that, uh, that are placed to grow even more, uh, grow a little bit finer. Uh, this is another example. This one's a little bit harder to see, but I can tell you in person, it's a tremendous difference between the, the first and second. And this is, again, with surgery uh, uh, with the PRP and A-cell. Um, again, this is a gentleman that at that time when I was just transitioning over to using it, I, I saw a tremendous difference in the second session with the PRP and A-cell. Uh, don't have any slides with ATP because it's all mixed with, my, with, all, with everything else I do. I'll tell you how I use it and what I've seen. So ATP is a liposomal AP, ATP mixture that's uh, currently only in a liquid format. And uh, you, you, you put it into your grafts. I put about 90% of, of that into the grafts and I save a little bit into a container for them to spray for the first 24 hours, about you know, every hour or so until the, the little spray bottle is gone. Uh, the thought process is that with ischemic injury that the ATP is going to help with the graft growth. Um, and uh, again, Cooley's done some really good work with this and shown in, in, in a radiated side that he actually had better growth in that side with grafts that had the ATP. And I've noticed that with the grafts, what I was noticing early on is grafts were growing about six months without, on average, without anything, just normal transplants for me in, ter in terms of substantive growth. And with PRP and ACEL, I've seen graft growth, uh, substantive growth around four months. And now with ATP, I've seen oftentimes substantive growth at even as early as three months. I've seen that there is a, a better healing, less scabbing um, with the PRP and ACEL. And when I added ATP, I've seen even better improvements with that. The one negative I've seen with these products, and it may be the ACEL, uh, is that sometimes they have a little bit more of a vascular blush to the area of the recipient sites for even up to two to three weeks. It's, they may need a little bit of camouflage makeup on there. But I believe that that's, there's, it's drawing a lot of vascularity to that area. That's not always the case. I would say probably less than 20% of my patients have that. It's something I counsel my patients on. Um, I was talking to a colleague of mine out of California that never did, has never done PRP and A-cell. You know, I was talking to him out of Brazil, and he says, yeah, he, when he added ATP, that's the only transition he made. He's seen the same spike I've seen with PRP and A-cell in terms of how passionate I am about that. So I'm pretty convinced that the ATP does sub substantively improve results, make things more consistent. Um, and you know, a colleague of mine uh, out of, out of uh, Brazil, Marcelo Pichon, looks at what he calls PGI. In other words, if all variables are consistent, same surgeon in the same patient, that you'll, you'll have about a certain percentage of growth that's consistent. Let's say it's 80% every time or 90%. I've, I think I, I, with using this regenerative technology, I've seen an uptick where people are actually violating their, their PGI, in other words, getting better growth than what they uh, could otherwise. So that is the, uh, oh, sorry, I got one more slide. Uh, with stem cells, uh, I don't, you know, the other stem cells in PRP, et cetera, I, I look at it as more of the growth factor. I, I, I can't argue about stem cells. Um, I know there was a study that they did last year as a pilot study in the ICHRS using uh, 
uh, ADSC, adipocyte-derived stem cells, and showed no real benefit in terms of graft growth. I don't use any particular stem cells. I just use these growth, growth factors, and if there are stem cells, then they're great. Um, but I don't have enough experience with that last uh, comment. That's it. So let's start the next section. Um, I just introduce. Do you want to introduce your associate?